Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to The Prestige. Uh, this was another donation reward request by Everett Taves, um, who I guess has a hard-on for Christopher Nolan films, because uh, we just had reacted to Memento the other week, and now we're doing this one. Um, so yeah, we have The Prestige. I don't know too much about this, I believe that it's about stage magic, which I'm a, I'm a big fan of, personally. I love stage magic. Like, every season on America's Got Talent, for example, if there's a stage magician, I'll be impressed. <laughs> um, not that they're there, but I, I'm almost always impressed by stage magic. Um, not always. There are exceptions. There are stage magicians who just aren't as great. Um... Some of the best, in my opinion, is close-up magic. I, I really like that, especially involving cards. Um, big example, if you do watch America's Got Talent, uh, or if you watch the uh, Got Talent uh, Global Championships, um, there is a winner on both of them called uh, Shin Lim. Uh, he won both a season of America's Got Talent and the AGT World Championships. And he's just phenomenal. Like, seriously, one of the best magicians I've ever seen. Like, right up there with the likes of Penn and Teller, for example. Um, but yeah, I love stage magic. I think Christian Bale is in this, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I, I, I know, I, I've heard of the movie. I've, I've seen trailers, but it's been a long fucking time. <laughs> like, I, I, I think I saw the trailers when this movie was first coming out and everything. Um, and, and maybe a little bit afterwards, but I, I don't know the... I, 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 I never saw it. I just... I don't know. I just never did. <laughs> um, so I don't really know much of anything about what's going to happen. I don't know, like... Even if the movie has a lot of stage magic in it, I, I don't know if that's actually going to be the focus or... If, there's going to be some other big story going on. I don't know. Like, I doubt it's going to be like a crime thriller like Now You See Me. But, which I still haven't seen the second one of those, by the way. I need to see the second one of those. But, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I don't know where this is going. And I don't know uh, if it is dealing with stage magic, what kind. Because there's so many different kinds of stage magic. There's just standard sleight of hand, there's close-up, there's escapism. There's so much that can be done with magic. So it's like, I'm just, it's like the cogs in my mind are reeling, wondering, like, what is this going to be? Um, now, I am watching this on YouTube. Um, Everett gave me the money to rent it on YouTube. Um, so... Yeah, because of that, uh, there might be a little bit of lag, a little bit of freezing that happens sometimes with watching uh, these movies on YouTube. I don't know why. Like, I've reacted to other things on YouTube, and they don't lag like that. Even longer things. Um, so I don't know if it's just the length of the movie. I don't know if the player, when you watch the movies on YouTube, I don't know if the player is different or something. or I don't know. But, yeah, it does that sometimes, so just a heads up. Um, and, yeah, I'm more excited for this than I was with Memento, to be completely just honest. Because with Memento, I didn't know anything going in. This one, again, I believe it is at least focused quite a bit on stage magic, which, again, as I said, I am a big fan of. Um, so it, it would definitely interest me a lot more. And I'm very much, um, uh, intrigued by that alone. Um, uh, plus, to be fair, now that I have seen Memento, that movie was, the way it was presented was very, 
disorienting, I guess you could say. It, it, at least on your first watch, it takes you completely off guard and everything. And I believe even even Everett, I believe you said that it like takes multiple rewatches to really catch everything and all. Um, and I, I watched reviews on the movie, and other people were saying that too. Like on the first watch, you'll, you'll just be lost a lot of the time. But then on multiple rewatches, you'll start to get things better. Um, but yeah. It's like, <laughs> this one just has more of, I guess, a vested interest in me in general. But I don't know. I, I don't know if it'll be good. I don't know if I'll enjoy it. I don't know. So, yeah. Uh, I'm excited, though. Uh, we're going to get right into it. So when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the movie. So that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So... This was The Prestige, a movie about a deadly rivalry between two, technically three, <laughs> um, stage magicians in the late 1800s, early 1900s era. And I'm going to get the my two negatives out of the way first, because I do have two negatives. I, I, I have two things that I didn't like about it. But otherwise, I actually really enjoyed this movie. My first negative, I don't like the ending. I don't like that one of them won. I think it would have been better had Fallon not been Bo Borden or Borden's twin or whatever. Again, both of them were Borden, both of them were Fallon. I think it would have been better if Fallon was just someone else. And that uh, he killed, um, that he killed Angier, and then both Angier and Borden died, showing that their rivalry and obsession with each other was their eventual downfall and their eventual doom. I think it would have made a much bigger impact by having one of them win. It tries to, it, it almost tries to paint one of them as being not only better than the other, which in my opinion, goes against what the point of the movie should be. But it also paints one of them almost as being in the right. And the problem is, both of them were very much in the wrong. But if either of them were painted in the right, just personally, I think Angier was a little more, like, he, he was not as bad. Let's be honest. Borden was a lot worse. Borden was a lot worse. Both of them, I guess. But again, it's just it just feels like a really sloppy ending to what was otherwise a really good movie. It just felt like... It, it just didn't work, in my opinion. My other issue is that the movie was too damn long. <laughs> This is a two-hour movie, and I know for a lot of movies, uh, that's pretty normal, but, like, for a superhero movie or something, that works, because a superhero movie keeps the action and pacing always feeling fresh, always feeling like something is happening that keeps your attention. When we got to the one-hour mark halfway through this movie, I was wondering when the hell this was going to be over. Like, one hour in, halfway through the movie, it already felt like it should be over. Because it felt like there was just so much happening. It just felt like there was so much happening, and it was just too long. They did way too much and made it way too... Just made... Just put too much into it. And this kind of goes with this same point, so I didn't count it as a third... Uh, issue. Uh, it it, it kind of goes with the same point. The entire love angle thing that was going on, the entire romantic angle with uh, 
with Sarah and then the and then ScarJo's character felt completely forced in just to pad out the runtime. And again, like I said, this goes in with the fact that it felt overly long. It it, it felt completely unnecessary. And the way it ended with Sarah uh, committing suicide and ScarJo's character just leaving just felt really lazy. It just felt like it was just, again, thrown in for the hell of it. Now, Angier's wife at first, the, the one girl uh, from the beginning and everything who died, uh, that really set all this into motion... Like, that was fine. That setting things into motion was fine. But bringing in, again, these other two girls, um, both of whom loved separate versions of... Uh, of Borden and everything and all of that jazz, it just felt like too much. And if, again, it felt like it was forced in just to pad things out, just to make it longer. I feel like this could have easily been an hour and a half movie, and would have been a lot better if they just cut out that entire storyline. Um, but yeah, those are my real complaints about it. It, it just it felt way too long, and, and certain things because of that felt forced in, mainly the love uh, angle. Um, and then beyond that, I didn't like the ending. Um, well, specifically the fact that Borden won, that one of them won in, at all. <laughs> um, now, the other part of the ending, let's talk about that real quick while it's fresh in my mind. So, the stunt double, the drunk stunt double, isn't the one who died. That was my theory at, at first, as you remember. It's like, Oh, was, was the stunt double the one who died? And it wasn't really Angier, and he survived, and he's going to come back, and that was that's the trick? But instead, the trick ended up being that, it, it, like he admitted, it wasn't magic, it was science. He was cloning himself. And every time he performed the trick, the original one who was on stage would fall down into the tank and die. While um, the clone, well, would get off to do it again. Get away to do it again. So every time, there only ended up being one left. And at the end, we did see all those tanks full of dead uh, uh, Angiers. At the end, there was only one Angier. So Angier did die. There wasn't like a bunch of them roaming around because every time the trick was performed, all those 100 times, one of the Angiers would always die. So it's a, so my little theory I had for a moment there where it's like, oh, if he did this trick 100 times, then wouldn't there be a shit ton of Angiers running around? And it's like, no, no. Um, now, moving from that... Let's talk about that. So, because of a word, a, a little like word that is supposed to be uh, revealing his uh, Borden's trick, Angier had headed off to America to meet with Nikola Tesla, uh, who was a real life inventor who uh, had all of his i all these ideas and all these uh, experiments and stuff stolen by Edison and shit. Um, and in, in this movie, Tesla, obviously a fictionalized version of himself, was the one who created this, uh, machine, this cloning machine, uh, that Angier used in the act. And Tesla was played by David fucking Bowie, um, one of the greatest musicians who've, who's ever lived. Um, but he's been in acting roles before. It's not his. It's not his only acting role. He was in Zoolander. He was in Labyrinth, of course. Um, so it's not the first time he's acted. Um, not the only time. Um, 
but it it was probably his best role from what I've seen. Because he felt like, I mean, uh, yeah, I obviously recognized him as David Bowie. But after that initial surprise of seeing one of my favorite rock stars of all time in the movie, like, I just kind of accepted that he was Nikola Tesla, that he was the, again, fictionalized character. And he did very fucking well at acting. He did very well in the role. And I mean, of course, Christian Bale and Hugh Jackman did amazingly. Like, that's that's no surprise. Michael Caine was great. Scar jo was passable. <laughs> Scar Jo's always passable. She's never great. She's just passable. I'm not the biggest Scar jo fan. <laughs> but seriously... Um, Andy Serkis, wow, like, Andy Serkis, that was really surprising, too. Uh, but yeah, so, David, uh, Nikola Tesla and his, uh, assistant are the ones who created this machine, and at first they didn't think it worked, but, because they were trying to teleport the hat. Instead, they were cloning it, and the copies went to the, uh, outside of the lab and everything. Uh, they only realized after they had cloned the cat, Andy Serkis's character's cat, and when uh, Angier was leaving, he heard the cats and found them in the hat and all all the hats. So it's like, um, yeah, it's like somehow they created a cloning machine, and it's like leading up to that reveal and everything. It's like. The movie and the characters were saying that this was, like, real magic and shit. That this wasn't a trick. <laughs> Excuse me. Goodness. <laughs> and, granted, when, like, Michael Caine's character, Cutter, was saying uh, that and all, that was before... That was before he saw Angier again. So that was before he knew Angier survived. Um, so I guess he thought it was at the time. Um, but yeah, that's a really interesting twist that really I didn't see coming at all, um, and kind of takes this from just a drama to a little bit of sci-fi as well. Um... But the movie is mainly just about, of course, uh, Angier and Borden's bitter rivalry that starts when they were working together under another magician. They were working as plants under another magician to help with his act. Um, Angier's wife was the magician's assistant, and during a simple uh, water tank escape act, everything went wrong because Borden, whichever one it happened to be at the time, use the wrong knot. Use the knot he was specifically told not to use because it was too dangerous. And because of it, she drowned and died. And this led to their entire bitter rivalry, them not only just trying to generally one-up each other, but sabotage each other's acts. Uh, we saw Angier shoot Borden during a bullet-catching uh, stunt by putting a real bullet into the gun, which was a trick. Well, it was a real gun, but it was used as a trick gun, basically. Um, and then, of course, Borden uh, responded by sabotaging... Angier's show by having the uh, birdcage snap shut, breaking uh, this woman's fingers, who was just someone from the audience. She wasn't even a plant, apparently. And then so on and so forth. Um, Borden caused Angier's leg to be shattered, basically, because he, he never recovered from that. Um, he, he was walking with a limp and with a cane ev like forever after that. Um, and appar apparently even his clones were, I guess. I guess even the clones inherited that, because 
I presume that the Angier who died at the end was not the original Angier. Because every time he performed that stunt on stage, he would fall into the trap door and drown. So the Angier was technically the 100th Angier, the one at the end. I mean, granted, it's a clone, so he has all his memories and stuff as well up to that point. So, sure? It, it's weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, they get into this bitter rivalry. During this time, uh, the Bordens... Uh, marry this woman, at, uh, Sarah, and have a child. And, and at point, Sarah mentions, like, some days when you tell me you love me, you mean it, and some days you don't. And it's and, and when you find out that there's two of them, it's like, that actually makes a lot of sense, because it's like, one of them did actually love Sarah, and the other one didn't. And that's also why ScarJo's character got upset and eventually left because, again, there were two of them, so and there was a difference in the way he uh, Borden acted around her at different times. So it's like it, it it's just wild, a wild twist that changes a lot throughout the discourse of the movie. Um. Now, the magic performed in this. As I mentioned, I am a fan of magic. I pretty much always have been. This is definitely the more, um, you know, classic, um, big stage magic of, you know, that time period. The kind of magic that is more akin to... I guess just, like, big performance than anything else. It's, like, by today's standards, that kind of stuff isn't as impressive. A water tank escape, um, a, a transporting man act, those things aren't as impressive in the current day because they're so old. They're so old, they, they're so overdone, a lot of people know the tricks. So, uh, in current day, stuff that tends to be more impressive tends to be stuff like clairvoyance, and close-up card magic. Those are the things that tend to really impress people. Because clairvoyancy acts basically like mind reading and uh, doing stuff like that. For example, let's say a magician has a box. It's a closed box. It's like taped or something shut, uh, even maybe even chained. The magician gives the box to... Um, some other person. Like, let's say if it's America's on, Got Talent, they might give it to one of the judges. If it's uh, Fool Us with Penn and Teller, they'll, they'll give it to Penn or Teller. Um, and then they'll ask the, uh, they'll ask whoever the judge is, Penn and Teller, to name a card. They name a card. Uh, the guy finds the card in the deck. He shuffles it back in. Taps the deck a couple times, uh, scrolls through the deck again, that card's gone. It ends up in the box that uh, the judges or Penn and Teller or whoever had been holding the entire time. That's more of a that's more of an impressive trick in today's day and age. Because he he basically it's not really clairvoyance, like really. Like the trick is obviously power of suggestion, but he's making you believe that he's reading your mind, and that card is basically already in there, in a way. Um, even if, like, before the box is chained or taped or whatever, he shows you there's nothing in it. The point of that being is, like, it's more impressive. It's more surprising. Again, like, if someone went on to America's Got Talent and tried doing a water escape act from a tank like that, it, it wouldn't be as impressive. Because, again, it's old hat. It's too old. It's too overdone. It's not, a, it's not an act that flies in this day and age. But, again, this movie took place in the late 1800s, early 1900s. So it's like these characters doing these kinds of acts makes sense. It works because of the time period. 
But from an entertainment standpoint, it's not as exciting as a viewer. I'm not saying that it, it's bad or anything, because again, it works for the context, but it's just not as fun to watch as like if I were watching America's Got Talent and I was watching Shin Lim perform his amazing, phenomenal close-up magic. No. Um, but by no means does that mean it's bad. I'm just saying, like, there is that little bit of disconnect. But I don't consider that an issue with the movie. Now, I, I've already stated, the acting was great, the, the sets were great, the musical score was great. All of that was fantastic. I had no issue with pretty much any of that. Again, really my only two problems with the movie were the ending, the fact that Borden won, and the fact that the movie just felt way too long, and because of it, some things like the uh, entire romance angle that Borden had going on felt completely forced. And then, and then there's also a question I just thought of. Whose daughter is that? I mean, yes, it's Sarah's daughter, but which Borden is the actual father of this, of this kid? Is it the one who survived, or is it the one who was hanged? Because the one who was hanged seemed a lot, seemed to care for her, like, a lot more. That's just how it seemed to me. And in the end, we don't even know, like, because of the, because of the way it's uh, presented and everything, like, we don't even know how far back the entire twin trick was going on, how often they had been switching places, how long. Uh, like, was it even back to the point where uh, the entire thing happened with, uh, with uh, Angier's wife? Because remember, Borden, the one who was killed, said in, said, said in court that he didn't remember what knot he tied. Meaning that it, it kind of makes me think that the Borden who survived, the one who was uh, not in prison, you know, that he was the one who... Uh, tied the knot. I don't know. It's just, there's a lot there. There's a lot to unpack. But this was a, this was a good movie. It was. I enjoyed it. I, I thought, even though it felt way too long and slow-paced because of that, like, it was still good. It was still enjoyable. Fucking David Bowie. <laughs> My God. <laughs> The, the only bad thing about that is we didn't get to hear him sing. Um, but yeah, it had everyone in it. Christian Bale, Hugh Jackman, ScarJo, Michael Caine, Andy Serkis, David Bo Like, this was a star-studded cast. Like, jeez. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me in the comments below what you thought of The Prestige. And I'm sure I'll be hearing from you, Everett. Um, whether you write a book report or not on your thoughts on this one. Um, I, I can say I definitely like this a lot more than Memento. Um, I, I, def I, I mean, even though, again, the kind of like how it was uh, handled was still like, oh, it, it kind of jumped around a little bit. Like we saw the, um, the ending, uh, well, near the ending, pretty much early on, almost first. Like, the entire thing with Angier dying. Well, actually, he actually did die, but... And, uh... And then it kind of skipped around. There were a couple points where it showed uh, Borden in prison, but most of it seemed to be pretty uh, sequential just during the events between the death of Angier's wife and the the Tesla machine uh, trick where everything started to go crazy with that.
Most of the stuff seemed to be the events between those two. But yeah, tell me your thoughts down below, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time. Hey everyone, Connie here, and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. If you want to check out any of my social media links and more, please check them out over to the side. And if you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave those down below. In the meantime, though, thank you so much once again for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.